Being just 10 miles north of Merida, Sibichaltun is one of the most visited archaeological sites in all of Yucatan. The site is often thought of as a little brother to larger ceremonial centers like Chichen Itza or Uxmal, but this is far from the whole story. Sibichaltun translates as the place where they wrote on stone, though there's a good deal of debate regarding the site's true name, but more on that later. Though much of the architecture at the site dates from the 9th century CE, several more ancient structures can also be found across the site. Conservative estimates place the appearance of monumental architecture in Sibichaltun in the pre-classic age, around the 5th century BCE. But during the Archaic period, perhaps going back as far as the year 1500 BCE, Sibichaltun was already home to Mayan peoples inhabiting homes made of perishable materials with stone foundations. Given that people still live just a couple hundred meters from the ancient temples of their ancestors, Sibichaltun is one of the longest continuously inhabited settlements in the entire American continent. The Temple of the Seven Dolls is the most famous structure in all of Sibichaltun. The striking temple got its name when in the 1950s archaeologists discovered seven small figures buried within its structure. These seven dolls present physical deformations which for the Maya represented divine favor. The figures can still be seen at the site's museum. Aside from its architectural beauty, which is considerable, the temple is also famous for its sunrise on the spring equinox, March the 21st, during which the sun passes directly through its doorway. This event typically attracts thousands of spectators, many of whom believe the astronomical event to be spiritually invigorating. But aside from the Temple of the Seven Dolls, the Shlaka Cenote, and the colonial era chapel, most visitors don't often venture much deeper into the site, making quick work of Sibichaltu and limiting their visit to just around an hour or so. But behind Sibichaltun Central Plaza and off the beaten path lay several structures of great interest, including residential complexes and even a Mesoamerican ball court. Sibichaltun shows evidence of several architectural styles, but the dominant forms are the Puk and Teotihuacan inspired Tablero Talut. Walking through Sibichaltun's jungle pass is a lot of fun and affords visitors the opportunity to see structures few get to actually see. And this is to say nothing of the site's exuberant wildlife. Some of the most stunning birds commonly seen at Sibichaltun include Yucatan jays and the Mot Mot or Pajaroto as it's known locally. If you are enjoying this video, please take a moment to like and subscribe. We are a growing channel and your support really means a lot to us. Archaeologists are currently working in the southwest quadrant of the site to restore several large structures, including Temple 46, which appears to date from the 8th or 9th century CE. These structures bear evidence of having been erected atop older existing temples, a practice which was quite widespread in Mesoamerica. Note the niches on the facade, which were almost surely decorated with stucco masks depicting either the rain god Chak, the sky god Itzabna, or the sun god Kiin. Because this type of ornamentation was made of stucco, relatively few examples of these types of masks survive to this day. Though, for example, those in nearby Akanke, as well as in Cojolich in the state of Quintana Roo, are remarkably well preserved. Like the rest of the temple, these masks would have been covered in plaster and painted in bright colors, mostly red. Nothing like the ruins we see today. Within Sibichaltun's ancient structures, archaeologists have found interior chambers with puzzling inscriptions. For example, back in 1989, archaeologists found a tomb belonging to, and forgive my Mayan, Kalonche Uk U Chancha or Lord of the Dominion of the Khan in Ho. Let's see you do better. This is puzzling, as the logical conclusion is that the Lord of Tho resided and was buried in Sibichaltun, not Tho, or ancient Merida itself. 
Since that time, other inscriptions making reference to this lineage have been found, including inscriptions on a stele and even on the bones of deer. Moreover, ongoing research seems to only give further credence to this view. One possible explanation is that Svichaltun is the true Tho, or seat of power of the Ho, and that ancient Merida ought to be referred to as Ishkansi Ho instead of using these two names interchangeably, as has been custom. Either way, Sibichaltun is a fascinating and must-see site for archaeology enthusiasts. Just make sure to take your time, take it all in, and bring along a wide rim hat, sunblock, bug repellent, and water, as that limestone gets notoriously hot. Entrance to Sibichaltun costs 282 pesos, but is free for Yucatecan residents on Sunday. The site's facilities are quite good, with clean bathrooms, lockers, and ample parking for 25 pesos. Admittance to the archaeological site also includes the on-site museum, which is quite remarkable and houses several impressive artifacts from Svichaltun and other sites in the Yucatan. Though it is sad that it's no longer possible to climb or enter the Temple of the Seven Dolls, most of the structures at Sibichaltun do not have this restriction. On a personal note, being from Merida, Sibichaltun has always seemed comforting and reassuring, like some kind of totem of permanence. It was here long before I got here, and will hopefully always be. It may be true that nothing lasts forever, but well into its fourth millennia, it sure is doing better than most. Until next time, this is Capital Sub of Undergrad, signing off.